Hi, we're the Relationship Coaches. My name's Lindsay. And I'm Lisa. And we're talking about everything to do with your love relationship. We, we do the real talk here, right? We like to get down and dirty and talk about it all. So what are we talking about today, Linz? We are talking about mismatched desire between two individuals. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. We hear it a lot, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. Right? So let's talk about exactly what mismatched desire even means, right? Mm -hmm. So what's the first category? So there's two types, really. There's a mismatch in the frequency of sex or physical intimacy in a relationship. So essentially, like layman's terms, one person wants it more than the other, right? Yeah. One person's happy with every other week and the other person wants it daily. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that's a constant underlying battle or um, detente or like feeling in the relationship of like one person always feeling like they want it more than the other. Yeah. And I think that probably leads to feelings of like, what are the fights that come up from this? I think it's like, well, I'm always the one initiating sex, right? right? Yes. You never initiate, right? And we know not to use the words always or never when we're <laughs> fighting with our partners, but that happens, right? And then yeah. it gets the person on the defense saying, well, you know, I just don't, I'm, I'm happy with just having sex every other week. And, you know, so, so there's this like recurring arguments that come up. Yeah, which can be frustrating when you feel like you're having the same conversation over and over again and not getting a different result, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so what's the other type of mismatch and desire? So the other type would be um, the, the type of sex that you're having, right? So this is where we find like one person in the, in the couple likes a certain type of sex or a certain position and the other maybe doesn't. Or it could be that the, the type of sex that um, you're having is sort of like you have this like script almost, right? Yeah, Where you're yeah. just like having the same type of sex all the time and there just isn't enough variety. So this is where we hear a partner saying like, oh, it's just like I'm kind of bored with our sex mm -hmm. life because it sort of feels like you know, Groundhog Day. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to get excited to have the same type of sex all the time. Totally. And we hear both the frequency and the type. We hear those comments from clients on a daily basis. So what's important to note is that there's no normal. Mm -hmm. There's not an answer here on like, you should be having this much sex and this type every day. There's no answer. This is really and truly unique to you, unique to your relationship. And um, that's what's fun about it is mm -hmm. that it's a journey and figuring it out. Yes, I love that point so much, Linz, because we often get asked like, what's a, what, what's a healthy number of times to be having sex a week, mm -hmm. a month? And, and honestly, we don't answer it for that reason, nope. right? Because it really is about what you're co-creating yes. with your partner. And it only becomes a problem when you're not on the same page. Exactly. Yeah. Which I think is a great segue into what do we do about this? Yes, what can you do about it? So as a couple, <laughs> you were gonna sound like a broken record here, talk to each other, <laughs> communicate about yeah. it. And, and so Linz, what, what, what do couples, how do these conversations typically happen? Where are people messing up? Well, I think people are really messing up by coming out with a statement like, we don't have sex enough. Yeah, so the other person feels attacked. They feel attacked. Yeah. And, um, and not then hearing the mm -hmm. other person's side of it, right? Mm -hmm. And so it can become a stalemate real quick. Yeah, yeah, where the other person either goes in to prove and defend, well, I'm tired all the time, I'm working a double day, I'm doing this, I'm mm -hmm. doing that, and then um, they're not really even talking about the issue, or they can just agree and say, yeah, you're right, we're not having sex enough. And then we should do better. We should do better. Yeah. And then the conversation's over. Yeah. And that's <laughs> not productive. No. No, because it doesn't create a different result. Yeah. Yeah. So setting up the conversation is important. And then having the conversation in a way that you are really listening to the other person, mm -hmm. right? So how do we actively listen? We, you know, we engage with them, we put away our phones, we get curious. And the most important thing is that we try to understand their perspective. Yes, 100%. And I think that um, starting that conversation in a different way than maybe you ever have in the past might create a different ending to that conversation, right? So mm -hmm. if in the past you've always said something like, we just don't have sex enough, like I need to have more sex, maybe instead starting the conversation with, 
how you're feeling, mm-hmm. right? Or even asking your partner, like, how do you how feel, are they feeling? feeling about yeah. the frequency and type of sex that we're having? Mm-hmm. Get them to open up to you. And maybe they are then saying to you, like, I actually really wish that we were, that we had more sex, that we were more closely connected. And, but I just don't feel like ignoring each other all day and then getting into bed together is enough. Like, what I actually need is more physical touch throughout the day. I want hugs, I want kisses, I want that butt pat, whatever it is. Maybe (laughs) your partner is like opening up and saying, and telling you what it is that they need to feel more excited about getting it on. (laughs) Totally. (laughs) So what about, so that's something that you can do with your partner. What about on your own, Linz? Like what are some things um, that you can do like just solo yeah. to you know increase your desire or to get more in touch with your own sexuality i think that's such an important question at least because there's so many things mm-hmm. there's so many things and i think what what we often do as humans is we blame our partner right mm-hmm. well we're not having enough sex because you don't want to or mm-hmm. because um you don't find me sexy you know, mm-hmm. and by saying something like that, you're really handing the power over to them. Yeah. You're handing the power for your happiness, your your sexuality mm-hmm. over to your partner. And here's the thing is that we own our own sexuality. Mm-hmm. We are sexual beings individually. So what can you do on your own? Well, the first thing is figure out, you know, what turns you on. Yes. What turns you on? Who can answer that question right now? If I was to ask you, what are three things that turn you on? Or what can you do to turn yourself on? Yeah. Most people can't answer that. And that is really where desire starts. It starts from within you. It starts with your thoughts Mm -hmm. and some action. So what, Linz, what are some things that you could do to turn yourself on? Well, (laughs) first, I think the first and foremost in turning yourself on is getting in touch with your own body and Mm -hmm. your own sexuality. So as simple as masturbating, exploring your body, figuring out where you like to be touched, how you like to be touched. But even more basic than that, at least, is like this base level of Mm self-care. If you're not feeling sexy in your own body, then you're not going to put out that energy Mm -hmm. of sexuality or that energy of desire, right? Absolutely. I know when I've had like a stressful few months and maybe I've been eating unhealthy or even just like packed on like five pounds, it can make my, it can decrease my desire for sure. A hundred percent. And so that is something that, that I have to own. Like, okay, I'm going to start eating healthier. I'm going to, you know, get back to the gym more frequently because I know that for me, it's different for everyone. But for me, I know that when I feel good in my body, then I feel good having sex. It is like one equates to the other. So maybe, maybe for you it's that, or maybe it's more about self-acceptance. Maybe it's about learning to love the body that you're in. Mm -hmm. And what does that look like? Like truly appreciating and having gratitude for your strength and your beauty and learning to love yourself so that when you are naked with your partner, you're owning it. You're like, yeah, "Yeah, this is awesome. Like I love my body. And that's, it's, it's a journey though, right? It's not, it's, it's not a destination. It's a journey. (laughs) And that is a giant ask for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So if that feels big right now, and that feels like, holy hell, like let's just move on from this conversation. You can start small. So if that feels big, turn the lights off and start there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's good. Figure out the setting for um, getting sexy, right? For some people, it's like time of day and knowing what time of day they feel sexy, Mm -hmm. right? And and trying to make sure that your partner knows that, like, especially for the partner that has a less desire frequency, they can, once they learn this, be able to spell out for their partner, like, these are the, this is like the setup that is going to turn me on yeah right so that's the other thing too is like maybe you like the lights maybe you like music maybe it's about candles maybe it's about having a bath or a shower together first but you know having those conversations and and figuring it out with yourself first and then being able to articulate that to your partner is huge being able to tell them this is what turns me on Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. Who's not going to want to hear that list? <laughs> I think everybody would want to hear that list yeah. in their relationship. <laughs> yes. So what's another way that you can do the self-exploration about your sexual desire on your own? Yeah, again, there's lots of directions we could go here in this conversation, but I would suggest checking out um, some ethical porn sites. Mm, love that. Yeah. Right? So are you, do you like watching? Is it something that you like to see? Are you a visual person? Mm -hmm. Or is that like too much for you and you would prefer audio? So a lot of the sites now will, they'll just like have um, people acting out or like telling an erotic story. Um, that can be super hot. Absolutely. You can just read the material. You don't even have to, you could. It can be audio, it can be <laughs> visual, it can be um, words. It, like yeah. You can get this in any form nowadays. <laughs> well, at, or go completely old school and just get like a romance novel. Yes. Right? And, yeah. and see what about the sex scenes in that turn you on. What's hot for you? Highlight it and then hand it to your partner. Be like, <laughs> this is what is hot for me, right? Because yeah. again, sometimes it's hard to articulate um, in, in, in words. So use what's already written and then hand it over to your partner. Be like, I want to try this. Are you in? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And it, you know what, Lisa, you mentioned this earlier, but what's important about this whole like journey and self-discovery is that science has really and truly proven that we all desire variety mm -hmm. and not just uh, so it's like a misconception that, um, women want less sex and men desire more sex and different sex. Mm -hmm. I don't know why society has given us that narrative, yeah. but it's not true. Nope. Nope. The, what we're talking about today, like mismatched and misaligned um, sexual desire, is, happens just as much with mm -hmm. both genders, with all yep. forms of sexu sexual orientation. So this is just, it just happens for everybody, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So variety is key. Variety is the spice of life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So think about um, different things that turn you on and some different things that you'd like to try, even if it's just like, hey, I want to try this position. Mm -hmm. And then you can go back to your partner after you've done this self-exploration and, um, and let them know, this is what I discovered. This is what I would like to try. And so at least that can sound scary to some people too, like starting that conversation with their partner. Mm -hmm. So how can people do that? So glad you asked. <laughs> we have a couple of incredible resources. So we will link them here. Um, one of them is uh, Let's Know, Let's, Yes, No, Let's Talk. Let's Know, Yes, No, Let's Talk. Um, downloadable where you can actually just fill, out, fill it out on your own and then bring it to your next date night and have some really engaging conversations in what you would like to do in and out of the bedroom. Yeah, and then we also have our emotional ed and our sex ed guides um, that are about a little bit about education and they both include some, some conversation prompts, a way to get things kind of out in the open and just starting conversations with your partner.